so our next topic is fatigue okay so this is a, a, a aluminum rod okay an aluminum rod with a, uh, maybe a 2 or 3 mm diameter okay so uh, yeah is it possible or not get a pulling force very fracture and down is it possible hmm? by a tensile force or pulling force or facts and I don't know is it possible an aluminum rod the two the camera line hello okay, is it possible I have tried many times, but it is not possible. Okay, by the pulling force or any pushing force, I am applying pushing force as well as pulling, tension and compression. But it is not possible to make a fracture or make a plastic visible plastic deformation on this aluminum rod. Okay, but I can fracture this or I can cut this into two pieces, even with my hand. How can it be possible? How can I cut this into two pieces? Bending. Hmm? bending. By bending. Bending the top. It's not possible. By bending, it's not possible. Hmm? Repeat at bending. Yeah. Yes. This way. See this? First, I bend in this direction, okay. Then I bend in in the reverse direction. Then again in this direction, and again in this direction. So I can cut it into two pieces. Okay. So if I apply tens pulling force, I may have to apply a thousand or and twenty thousand newton to make a fracture on this aluminum rod. But even very small force by applying maybe 40 or 30 Newton by using my hand, I can convert into two pieces or I can make a fracture on this material. That means under this type of load, this type of load, under this type of load, this is very weak material. This material is very weak because it cannot handle this type of lot and what is this what is the name of this type of lot one bending in this direction then again bending in the opposite direction what is the name of that lot shear it's not shear the lot lot actually this one is a, a um, this one is a actually a constant lot okay this is a constant lot a pulling load is a constant lot but this type of lot so cyclic loading, loading or no? Yeah, it is a cyclic loading. It is a cyclic loading or fluctuating load, repetitive fluctuating load. Okay, so from this experiment, it is clear that the materials are very weak in the cyclic load. Even the material uh, is very strong in the pulling or constant load. The material is very weak in the cycling load, cyclic load. Okay, so this type of cyclic load is called fatigue load. Okay, fatigue load. So can you give an example, a member or a structure or a body which is subjected to this type of load? Can you give an example for this type of load acting on a member? Shaft. Shaft. Failure. Shaft failure. No, shaft failure shaft uh, in the load acting actually the our external loads are this three type external load may be axial load tensile or compressive shear load may be a twisting eh? power transmitting with twisting that is torsional load or twisting load then bending load the beam acting the bending load flexural load okay these are the three types of load okay 
and this three type of load may be a constant load or a fluctuating load. And the fluctuating and a cyclic load. It may be a cyclic load or a constant load. Okay, the tensile load or compressive load or twisting load or bending load. This three type of loading can be a cyclic load or constant load. So, can you give an example for a in case of shaft? I'll specifically tell you about torsion or twisting. Twisting or cyclic or not. It's not a cyclic load. Cyclic is a, a particular material, for example, for example, in the case of the rod, eh, this I consider the material in this in this region. Okay, the material in this point. So when I apply a bending like this, bending like this, this material, the material in this point, subject to tension, right? Because we can see this length is increased. The length is increased by this bending. Okay, so the material at the point one is subjected to tension. Okay, again, I bend in the reverse direction. That is actually I done in the experiment. I bend in the reverse direction. The material in the one point one is subjected to compression because we can see this a this length is less than that of this length. This length. Okay. So we can say this material in this point one is under compression. So when I repeat this process, what happened? The first tension, then again compression, again repeating tension, compression, tension, compression. So the load may be like this. First a tension, then a compressive load at the maximum value, then again a tension. So this is a cyclic load. Okay. So can you give an example for a member subject to this type of cyclic load? Okay, so the, the important thing is that most of our structure members are subjected to this type of cyclic load. This type of cyclic load. For example, in case of a connecting rod. So connecting rod which is used for the power transmission. So which one is the connecting rod? Connecting rod which one? This is the connecting rod. This one is the connecting rod. Okay, so in this condition, in this condition, what happened? See this. Actually, the we uh, the exploded gas apply push on the piston. This is the piston. So external gas apply a push on the piston. So what type of load is acting on the connecting rod? Cyclic load. It's, it's not cyclic. Uh, is it tension or compression? Hmm? Compression. Yes, at this stage it is subjected to compression because the external gas, exploded gas, develop a compressive load on the piston and the piston actually transferring that compressive load into the connecting rod. So we can say the connecting rod is subjected to compression at this condition. Okay, again, again, at this condition, what happened? At this condition, the Connecting load is moving upward, right? See this. In this condition, the connecting load is moving upward. So uh, uh, up to this point, the connecting load is subjected to compression. Then after that, what happened? The during the exhaust stage, the entire gas is um, uh, com coming out from the exhaust port. So this side is empty, and this crankshaft actually push the connecting rod in that direction so in that time actually connecting rod in the upward movement see this in this upward movement connecting rod experience a tension so in the downward movement connecting rod experience a compression in the upward movement connecting rod experience a tension so this is a very cyclic load compression tension compression tension so this is not a constant load Okay, so from the experiment, Ninkanda VDT, the experiment, the experiment in the connecting rod in the safe or no? Connecting rod, are they weak or no? Hmm? 
സിമിലർലി ഈ പിസ്റ്റനും അതെ പിസ്റ്റൺ ഗ്യാസ് എക്സ്പ്ലോഡ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ പിസ്റ്റൺ സബ്ജക്റ്റ് ഇട്ടു കമ്പർഷൻ ഗ്യാസ് റിമൂവ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ പിസ്റ്റൺ സബ്ജക്റ്റ് ഇട്ടു ടെൻഷൻ സോ മോസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് അവർ സ്ട്രക്ചർ മെമ്പേഴ്സ് ആർ സബ്ജക്ട് ടു ദിസ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് സൈക്ലിക് ലോഡ് ബട്ട് ഫ്രം ദ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ക്ലിയർ ദാറ്റ് മേ ബി ദിസ് മെമ്പർ ഈസ് വെരി സ്ട്രോങ് ഇൻ ടെൻഷൻ ആൻഡ് കമ്പർഷൻ കോൺസ്റ്റന്റ് ലോഡ് ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് വെരി വീക്ക് ഇൻ ദിസ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് സൈക്ലിക് ലോഡ് സോ വി ഹാവ് ടു സ്റ്റഡി ദിസ് സൈക്ലിക് ലോഡ് that is a fetic okay that is a fetic okay clear aile fetic enna na so material subject to repetitive or cyclic load cyclic stress will fail at a stress much lower than that required to cause failure under steady load adana experiment cheyidane steady load il njan apply the stress neka valare korchu stress lana ഞാൻ ഫ്ലക്ച്വേറ്റിംഗ് ലോഡ് അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്തപ്പോ അതേ സൈക്ലിക് ലോഡ് അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്തപ്പോ ഇത് ഫെയിൽ ആയേ ഓക്കെ സോ ദ ഫെയിലിയർ ഓഫ് എ കമ്പോണൻ സബ്ജക്ട് ടു സൈക്ലിക് ലോഡിംഗ് അറ്റ് എ സ്ട്രെസ് കൺസിഡറബ്ലി ലോവർ ദാൻ ദാറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഈൽഡ് സ്ട്രെസ് ഫോർ എ സ്റ്റാറ്റിക് ലോഡ് അപ്പൊ നോർമൽ പുള്ളിങ്ങോ പുഷിങ്ങോ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഉണ്ടാവുന്ന ലോഡിനേക്കാൾ വളരെ കൺസിഡറബ്ലി ലോവർ സ്ട്രെസ്സിലാണ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഫ്രാക്ചർ ആവുന്നത് ഇൻ കേസ് ഓഫ് സൈക്ലിക് ലോഡ് ഓക്കെ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് കോൾഡ് ഫെറ്റിക് ഫെറ്റിക് ഫെയിലിയർ okay so fetic is an important form of behavior in all materials including metals polymers ceramics etc <clears throat> okay fetic is important because it is the single largest cause of failure in metals 80% to 90% of the failure is because of fetic because most of our structure members are subject to fetic load cyclic load so we have to study this fetic loading condition in deep because 80 to 90 percent of our structure members are fail because of fetic under cyclic load nammada members n ella varunathu is dwara static load alla cyclic load so how can we design a material or how can we select a material under this circumference that is very important so this type of failure is very dangerous because it occur without any warning or significant in sign in failure in case of static load before failure there will be a plastic deformation sufficient warning will be but in case of fetic failure there will not be any sufficient warning or sufficient plastic deformation before failure okay so in this case like aluminum rod in the case like if we apply a static load pulling and down eppura adim onnu oru huge amount of deformation undayitte fail avulu but in case of this type of cyclic failure without any deformation and all without any deformation there is no deformation there is no change in length so without any deformation without any sufficient warning it fail out that is the main dangerous point about the fetic failure okay it is so we can say that is there is without any deformation uh, the material is failed that means it is a fetic failure uh, sorry it is a brittle failure so um, fetic failure is a bit brittle like in nature even in normally ductile material even in the static loading condition the material is ductile after plastic deformation only the material is fail in that static load but in case of fetic load the material is fail like a brittle nature okay so the process occur um, by the initiation and the propagation of crack ordinarily and the fracture surface is perpendicular to the direction of applied stress Okay. so what is the fracture stress this is a fracture stress fracture direction but the tensile load is acting in this direction because the length change is in this direction okay and the fracture is in the perpendicular direction of the applied stress so that is about fetic failure so already discussed so bridges aircraft wing machine components automobile parts rotating shaft they are fetic failure അങ്ങനെ ഷാഫ്റ്റ് ട്വിസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഒരു വാണിങ് കിട്ടും 
പക്ഷെ അതിന്റെ ഉള്ളിൽ നിന്ന് നടക്കുന്ന ക്രാക്ക് ഇനിഷ്യേറ്റ് ചെയ്തോന്ന് എങ്ങനെ അറിയാൻ പറ്റും അതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് നമ്മള് എന്തെങ്കിലും ടെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാതെ പറ്റുമോ ഒരു സാമ്പിൾ ആണെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് ടെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാം പക്ഷെ നമ്മുടെ സ്ട്രക്ചർ മെമ്പേഴ്സിന് ഇതുപോലുള്ള വിസിബിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഡിഫോർമേഷൻ പോലുള്ള വാണിങ്സ് കിട്ടിയാലേ നമുക്ക് അറിയാൻ പറ്റുള്ളൂ Okay, okay. So, this is about fictic failure. <coughs> so, these are the three common types of loads, axial load, shear load and flexure load. And this type of load may be static, it may be static or it may be cyclic. Okay, so static load on him is not a problem. But if it is a cyclic load, the material will be very weak. to carry the cyclic load okay so we are studying the cyclic load that is fetic failure so what are the different types of cyclic load acting on a material okay the first one is this one <coughs> uh, the reversed or sinusoidal stress cycle reversed or sinusoidal stress cycle in the reversed or sinusoidal stress cycle the load is like this this is the zero loading condition okay so the first load is increased to a maximum value like a tension for example a tension a tensile load is increased to a maximum value then the tensile load is decreased to zero tensile load is decreased to zero then again the material is substituted to compressive load so the compressive load is in the direction will be opposite and it reaches the maximum value compressive load reaches the maximum value and then again to zero and this process is continue again tension then again compression so this type of uh, cycle loading cycle is called reversed or sinusoidal stress cycle and what is the main characteristics of this one here the amplitude the sigma a of tension and uh, compression will be same both are same okay in similar the case of um, um, the connecting load in the case of connecting load the tensile load and the compressive load will be almost same okay so this type of um, loading is called reversed or sinusoidal stress cycle reversed or sinusoidal stress cycle so this is a maximum stress acting is this one sigma max and a minimum stress that means in the reverse direction actually in the this is the maximum compressive stress and this is the minimum okay so here in this direction it is tension here in this direction it is compression so that is the first one and what is the mean value of this mean value of stress what is the mean value of stress here zero it will be zero because sigma max minus sigma minimum by 2 sorry uh, by 2 that it will be zero okay so the mean value is zero here in this case of uh, reversed sinusoidal stress cycle and second type of stress cycle is <coughs> second type is this one this is my zero stress but the stress is not starting from zero there will be initial some tension then cyclic load will be like this cyclic load will be maybe like this so okay cyclic load this one is the axis of zero stress so here this is the amplitude this is the amplitude of the stress my and the range is this one the range is this one sigma r that means the from the one peak to bottom peak and the, but the minimum is equal to and the difference between the amplitude of these two that is the mean so that is the second one repeated stress cycle repeated stress cycle or this one this is also another type of repeated stress cycle and uh, here in this both case tension that means here in this case what happened in this case we apply tension the tension is reduced then again tension increase tension reduced tension increase so throughout it is subjected to tension okay so this type of or this one also tension then some 
At some portion, it is changing the direction to compression. Then again, tension. Okay. So this type is called repeated stress cycle. And so the uh, the graph will be asymmetric values. Asymmetric nature IQ value. Okay. It's not symmetric with respect to the x-axis. The third one is random stress cycle. There is no sinusoidal wave nature for this type of stress cycle. It will be random. For example, any type of uh, environmental type uh, loading. Okay. Environment, uh, for, for example, the load uh, developed by the wind. That may be in this type. There is no perfect pattern for the load application. So these are the three types of cyclic load that may act on a member. Okay. So in this, we have different uh, parameters, sigma m. This is equal to sigma max plus sigma minimum. So this one is sigma max plus sigma minimum by 2. Plus sigma minimum by 2. The range is sigma max minus sigma minimum. So this is sigma max. The This is for, in case of this reversed cycle, it is 0. Um, range is equal to uh, sigma m is equal to 0. Sigma r equal to sigma max minus sigma minimum. And the amplitude is equal to sigma r by 2. And stress ratio is equal to sigma minimum by sigma max. Okay, these are the different parameters in this stress cycle. Any doubt in this? Fatigue loading. Hmm? Okay, now. Okay, so next we are going to do an experiment to find the uh, fatic loading capacity of a material. Okay, or a material different direction. But steel and the fitting loading capacity will be different. For in case of aluminium, it has a different uh, another fatic loading capacity. To test the fitting loading capacity of a material, we are doing a fatic test. Okay, so here the main important thing is that in case of fatic test, we are using a cyclic load. We are applying a cyclic load. Then only we can test the material uh, resistance against this fatigue failure. Okay, so in case of UTM, actually in case of UTM, we are applying a static load, UTM machine, universal testing machine. Okay, we are applying a starting load. But in case of this fatigue test, we are applying a cyclic load. So how can we do this fatigue test? This is the apparatus, and, and there are different types of fatigue tests are available. And here we are studying rotating bending test apparatus, apparatus for mm, the fatigue test. Okay, so this is the arrangement for this fatigue test. In this, we have a motor, a, <coughs> a electric motor, and a flexible coupling is there, and a, a roller support is there, and a shaft. So from you, through this arrangement, the from the power from the electric motor is transferred to the specimen. So a specimen is hauled between the two grip here, and in between we have a two ball bearings. Okay, and in this specimen we are applying some amount of weight on the specimen. Okay, we are applying some amount of weight on the specimen. So here in this specimen, this is my specimen. Okay, and we use some bearing and arrangement to hold this specimen at this point, and another uh, some arrangement we transfer the power. Okay, using a motor, we transfer the power into the specimen. So, when we switch on this motor, what happened? The specimen starts to rotate. Okay, and the specimen starts to rotate, but in this specimen. I am applying some amount of weight, W. Okay. So when we apply weight on this specimen, what happened? For example, at, at this, this is my position one. This is my position two. Sorry, uh, material one. So this is my material one and this is my material two. So under uh, at this instant, the because of this weight, W, the specimen will deflect like this 
okay specimen will deflect like this so this is my material one this is my material two so material two subjected to tension material one subjected to compression okay then we switch on the motor the motor rotates the specimen also starts to rotate by 180 degree rotation by the 180 degree rotation of this specimen what happened the uh, material at the point one comes in the bottom region okay so a specimen is rotated by 180 degree sorry uh, 360 degree 360 degree it is rotated sorry 360, 180 degree so specimen is rotated by 180 degree so the point material in the point one come to this point and material in the point two come to this point okay so this is my material 2 and this is material 1. So what happened? Here we, we apply a weight W. There will be a deflection. So material 1 subjected to... Sorry. Here we apply weight W. This, be, this will be the deflection. Material 1 subjected to tension. Material 2 subjected to compression. So by the rotation of this specimen, every instant, each material in this specimen subjected to tension and compression. A cyclic load will be developed on the material or on the specimen. Clear idea? Okay. So you wait to go and do deflection now. And deflection is going to be time or instant or material tension angle. After 180 rotation of the rotor. That is compression now. You know, tension compression, tension compression now. Okay. Doubt and doubt. You can clear it. Answer it. Okay. So if we have arrangements, we have we are using bearings. bearings bearing Motor, motor in the shaft, shaft in the power transmitter. This is my specimen. This is my specimen for conducting the filter test. Okay, so motor initially motor started at the specimen lay e point in e point in a material one. E point in a point in a address in the material one. E point material two in the address. Okay, then e specimen will weight carry in the downward. So, of course, e specimen will be deflection down with all area deflection. This will be the deflection of the specimen. Okay, because of the weight W, W is acting in this direction. Okay, that means E point, if it is material, that means material 2 will be subjected to compression, and material in, in this point, the material 1 will be subjected to tension because we can see under this deflection, but a length increase, but a length decrease. Okay, so this will be subjected to compression, and this is subjected to tension. The clear eye line. Sir. Okay, so after um, after switch on this motor, motor or 180 degree rotating, motor 180 degree rotating, bo, e point e point middle specimen rotating 180 degree. For this point, e two nor the point e uh, point le material e Okay. But weight is not enough. Weight, we have a special arrangement to use the weight to pull downward area. But specimen is all rotating. So, this is the point of the middle. So, in this after 180 rotation, this will be the point 1. So, the point is the middle. So, again, weight W is acting downward. Then, this will be the deflection. So, Point one is subjected to 
കമ്പർഷൻ ഇനിഷ്യലി എന്തായിരുന്നു പോയിന്റ് വൺ സബ്ജെക്ട് ടു ടെൻഷൻ ആയിരുന്നു ബട്ട് ആഫ്റ്റർ വൺ എയ്റ്റി റൊട്ടേഷൻ ദ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഇൻ ദ പോയിന്റ് വൺ സബ്ജെക്ട് ടു കമ്പർഷൻ ആൻഡ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഇൻ ദ പോയിന്റ് ടു സബ്ജെക്ട് ടു ടെൻഷൻ ഓക്കെ സോ ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് എ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഇൻ ദിസ് സ്പെസിമെൻ ഇനിഷ്യലി സബ്ജെക്ട് ടു കമ്പർഷൻ then after 180 rotation it is subject to tension again after 180 rotation it is subject to combustion again after 180 rotation it is subject to tension so this will be a cyclic load on the material is it clear yes sir okay so this is the mechanism okay so we uh, we um, um, there is an arrangement we can see a counter that means number of such cycles can be counted അതായത് ഒരു ത്രീ സിക്സ്റ്റി റൊട്ടേഷൻ വരുമ്പോൾ ഈ കൗണ്ടർ ഒന്ന് കൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യും വൺ അത് വൺ സൈക്കിൾ ഈസ് കംപ്ലീറ്റഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർ അഗെയിൻ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ത്രീ സിക്സ്റ്റി ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ടു അങ്ങനെ ദർ ഇസ് എ കൗണ്ടർ വി അറേഞ്ച് ടു മെഷർ ദ നമ്പർ ഓഫ് സൈക്കിൾസ് ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ദിസ് സ്പെസിമൻ വി ക്യാൻ അപ്ലൈ ദ സ്ട്രെസ് ഓൾസോ നമ്മൾ അത് ഫ്രീ ആയിട്ടല്ല ഈ സ്പെസിമൻ വെയിറ്റ് വെയിറ്റ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ ഈ ഡിഫ്ലക്ഷന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് ഈ വെയിറ്റ് ഡബ്ല്യു ക്യാരി ചെയ്യുന്നത് കൂടാതെ തന്നെ വി അപ്ലൈ force also on the specimen okay appa aa force vechana namukku ee maximum amplitude parayan pattullo maximum etra force like apply idu nu okay so same time we are applying a force and we count the number of cycles using this apparatus so we can see the video rotating bending machine this is the arrangement you can see see this it is bending see it is rotating at the same time we are applying a downward force downward weight okay see this it is rotating the specimen is rotating so this is actually we are applying the downward see this this means rotating at the same time we are applying a downward force okay the downward force is is for this deflection then only we can make a tension and a compression on the material okay so that is about the test fetic test and from the fetic test we got a curve which is called sn curve so this is the last topic so we from the fetic test the final resulting curve is called sn curve from the utm test we got a stress strain curve right similarly in the fetti test from the fetti test we got a curve which is called sn curve sn curve okay so in the sn curve the y axis is amplitude along with the stress applied stress applied and n is the number of cycles before failure n is the s is the stress applied n is the number of cycle before failure okay that is s n curve so now we test conduct team test conduct edittu nammal aadim initially njan oru for example ee test le njan parnu ee work piece le ee weight koodade ee weight apply nu koodade nammal oru load apply cheyum oru external tensile load or compressive load apply ഈ സ്പെസിമെന്റിൽ ഓക്കെ സോ ഇനിഷ്യലി ഐ ആം അപ്ലൈങ് എ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പാസ്കൽ സ്ട്രെസ് ഓൺ ദി ടെൻസേ സ്ട്രെസ് ഓൺ ദിസ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പാസ് അത് അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്തിട്ട് ഞാൻ ഈ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് കണ്ടക്ട് ചെയ്യും അപ്പൊ ഇവിടെ കൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യും എത്ര സൈക്കിൾസ് ആണ് അപ്പൊ ഒരു പർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഒരു ടെൻ ഡേസ് ടു ടു സൈക്കിൾസ് വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ ടെൻ ഡേസ് ടു ടു സൈക്കിൾസ് വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോഴാണ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഫെയിൽ ആയി ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് കറസ്പോണ്ടിംഗ് ടു ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പാസ്കൽ സ്ട്രെസ് ദിസ് ഇസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പാസ്കൽ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പാസ്കൽ സ്ട്രെസ് ഇതിലുണ്ട് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പാസ്കൽ ഇവിടെ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പാസ്കൽ സ്ട്രെസ് ടെൻ ഡേസ് ടു ടു സൈക്കിൾസ് റൺ ചെയ്തു വിത്തൗട്ട് ഫ്രാക്ചർ ഓക്കെ സോ വി ഗോട്ട് എ പോയിന്റ് ഹിയർ വി ഗോട്ട് എ പോയിന്റ് ഹിയർ എഗെയിൻ ഐ കണ്ടക്ട് ദ എക്സ്പെരി വിത്ത് എയ്റ്റി പാസ്കൽ ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ഐ ആം അപ്ലൈങ് എ പുള്ളിങ് ഫോഴ്സ് ഓഫ് എയ്റ്റി പാസ്കൽ ഓൺ ദിസ് സ്പെസിമെൻ ആൻഡ് again i conduct the experiment then 
I counted number of cycles it can withstand without fracture. Either for example, 10 raised to 3, 10 raised to 3. That means 10 raised to 3 cycles. That means 10 uh, thousand thousand cycles with other Anjidu without fracture. At a 50, uh, 80 Pascal. That means I got another point. Similarly, another uh, one with the 70 Pascal, I got 10 raised to 4 cycles. So 10 raised to 4 cycles is in a rotate without fracture. 10 raised to 4 cycle is a fracture. Again, I got this point. By joining all this point, I got a curve. This is called SN curve. SN curve. Okay. Stress versus number of cycles curve. So this is my SN curve. And there are two distinct types of SN curves. This is for a ferrous alloys and this is for non-ferrous alloy. And what is the difference you can see in this? What is the difference in these two? This is the SN curve for the ferrous alloys and this is the SN curve for the non-ferrous alloys. In the difference in the Hmm? Notice in every difference. Huh? See the red curve and the blue curve. What is the difference? Red curve will affect the straight line at the Yeah. After a particular point, we can see a horizontal line. But here in the case of non ferrous alloys, we cannot see any horizontal curve. It is a completely uh, curved curve one okay so that is the difference so in case of ferrous alloys we can see a after a point we can see a uh, straight line curve, straight line but here we cannot see such type of straight line so i am taking this one okay in this so we conduct a fetid test and this sn curve is the final uh, result from the fetid test okay so for a particular material for example this is a ferrous material and in this case, um, um, the stress is the y-axis and the number of cycles in the logarithmic scale is the x-axis. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is my SN curve. So, <clears throat> this is for a ferrous material. Ferrous materials and the titanium alloy shows this type of SN curve. Okay. So, from the SN curve, we got different data. For example, see this as single. This is for a ferrous material. Okay, here we have different values of um, number of cycles: 10 raised to 2, 10 raised to 3, 10 raised to 4, 10 raised to 5, etc. And here I, I have a different stress values. Okay, for example, um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 Pascal. Okay. Then you material X no material another X material. Okay. And in this X material, other other never connecting load in Dagon. The X material is your connecting load in Dagon. Need a connecting load using X material. Okay. And in this connecting load, the maximum load um, developed on this connecting load is equal to 50. 50 and a maximum load. Available. That's a cycle How many cycles it can work? If the load applied during the working of the piston in the load is 50 Pascal. Okay. How many cycles it can work? Draw a line to this SN cup. Draw a vertical line. 10 raised to 2 cycles. 10 raised to 2 cycles. That means 100 cycles are working. 100 and 1 or in the cycle of the cycle. This is a cycle. One tension, one compression, one cycle of the One tension, one compression. Second cycle. This is 100 cycles are working. A connecting order. 101 or in the cycle of the fracture. And all so that is the uh, information we got from the SNP. Any doubt? 
So from the x-axis, we got the number of failure cycles before failure, the number of cycles to failure. And this is the amplitude of stress applied on the body or structure. For example, this connecting load is applied in 50, 40. 40 Pascal load is applied on this connecting load. Okay, so we can again, if we if the 40 is the applied load or maximum amplitude of applied load on the uh, connecting load, correspondingly it can work 10 days to 3 cycles. Sorry. 10 this is 100 that means 150 cycles more number of cycles can work so that means if you reduce the load acting on the member number of cycles it can work without fracture is increased okay then again i decrease the load to 30 i decrease the load to 30 what happened 30 load will be done. Of course, 30 load, 30 load will be done. Some people say, "Ethra cycle will not fail." Hmm? Anyone? Ethra load will not be done. Fail. Aye. Alla ethra cycles will not be done. Fail. Aye. Fail. Aye. 30 and below. In the yeah, yes, 30 and below 30. There is no such a number of cycles. That means if the load applied on this connecting rod is 30 or below 30, this connecting rod can work infinite cycles without any fracture. There will not be any fatigue failure for this connecting rod if the load is 30 or below 30. That is called endurance limit. Endurance limit. This truss is called endurance limit or fatigue limit. Another question. Any good connecting load in Dagana? Other any key? Infinite lifetime working. Lifetime. Infinite lifetime. I can end up working to know. In the stress of a connecting load design in the and the uh, connecting load in the material in the ultimate stress or no? I think it yield stress or no? Are the endurance stress or no? Which one? Hmm? For a connecting load, I am going to make a connecting load. Uh, in the design of the connecting load, uh, the connecting load should have to work infinite time. Are the it can be stress or not. Design jayim ba namalo stress or dekum, allowable stress. Is it yield stress or ultimate stress or endurance stress? Of course, this endurance stress will be less than yield stress or uh, ultimate stress. Yada select yinde? Endurance. Endurance limit. So, in your S7 design, design of machine elements, avada ningle cycle load var in the case le allam ningle dekum da stress or not. Endurance stress because if the stress is selected is endurance stress, then the component will work infinite time in a cyclic load. But if the stress is greater than that of endurance limit, this will be there will be a lifetime with a particular number of cycles. So that is the importance of this SN curve. But this can only see in this ferrous materials and the titanium, titanium alloys. But in case of this non-ferrous material, this is for non-ferrous material, such a horizontal line, we cannot see in this case of non-ferrous material. So non-ferrous materials, of course, there will be a lifetime. There is no infinite lifetime. For a particular stress value, there will be a lifetime. But by decreasing this amplitude, stress applied on the material, we can increase the lifetime from the curve which is clear if this uh, stress value is here stress value is here then the lifetime is this much and if the stress value is here then we can improve the lifetime 
okay so by reducing the stress value acting on the material we can increase the lifetime or number of cycles can work without failure is increased from this point to this point so that is the sn curve okay so this is for non ferrous materials okay so this is for non ferrous material there is no such endurance limit for the non ferrous material okay but for ferrous material we have a limit fatigue limit below that fatigue limit we can apply the stress for an infinite time infinite period of time that is the importance of sn curve any doubt about the fatigue test and the sn curve Any doubt on the argument? 